HKM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have more from Boston Marathon Week in Hopkinton. Courtney will let you know what's coming up on the HCAM channels. We'll introduce you to the Hillers Boys Lacrosse team and we'll get you up to date with the latest in Hillers Spring Sports. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. Educate Hopkinton hosted their fourth annual Know Your Vote. Panelists included Town Moderator Bruce Carlin, Town Manager Norman Kumalu, Superintendent of Schools Dr. Kathy McLeod, Selectman Chair Ben Paleko, School Committee Chair Ellen Scordino, and Planning Board Chair Ken Wisemantle. The program is intended to help get residents prepared for the annual town meeting. The Hopkinton Little League Parade officially kicked off the season. You can find a ton of photos at seedinhopkinton.org and also video footage of the event airing soon on HCAM. The Hopkinton Middle School Robo Hillers placed first in the state and 68 out of 200 in their division at the VEX World's Robotics Competition in Kentucky. This photo was taken by instructor Doug Scott. A group of Hopkinton High School students made a stop in Shanghai during their visit to China. This photo is courtesy of Josh Hanna, assistant principal. For more pictures of Hopkinton events, check out seeninhopkinton.org and also hcan.tv. Boston Marathon Week featured many fun events throughout the Hopkinton community. At Hopkinton High School, a group of Boston Marathon runners from China were welcomed in an event sponsored by the 26.2 Foundation, Golden Pond Assisted Living, and Dynasty Restaurant. Chinese students in Hopkinton performed some traditional songs and dances to welcome the runners. Hopkinton High School welcomed runners from China. Students performed dances and songs to welcome the runners. Actually, it was just a spark of an idea that the was given to the school superintendent, Kathy McLeod. And then a whole bunch of organizations came together that included uh, Golden Pond, Dynasty Restaurant, the entire Chinese community here in Hopkinton, then a whole bunch of other organizations came together, including the 26.2 Foundation, to put on this event that had not, it was such a, a warm welcome for our visitors from Shanghai and Beijing who are here to run the marathon. Uh, and Dimitri Karyakides, who lives in Shanghai, who every, oh, a, lot of, a lot of you know his father won the 50th Boston Marathon and has a statue right outside of Western Nurseries dedicated to his father's win. And really it was uh, the first warm welcome that was the group from China and Shanghai. They are really the guest of honors and in having performances and food and a few short little speeches uh, was quite, it's been quite a warm event. Um, it was a surprise because uh, uh, Tim Kilduff and uh, Mike Nees of the 26.2 Foundation, of which I'm also a member, uh, they suggested they uh, talk to the principal uh, of the school and uh, they had the idea of uh, bringing the Chinese community uh, to, uh, to welcome us. So uh, it was a big surprise for us, so we, we loved it. 
and of course it was a great event today. We come here to Boston to enjoy this incredible, incredible atmosphere. I can honestly say because I'm involved with the international marathon movement and I go to many marathons around the world, that Boston is not only unique because of history, but the atmosphere is, uh, is something else. No other big marathon has got the same atmosphere. Because here in Boston, you have uh, three days of, of, of a big party in the city, you know, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, uh, where so many people come to enjoy this, uh, the, the race. At the Boston State House, the Council of General of Greece presents the olive branch wreaths, which are distributed to the Boston Marathon winners. Hopkinton Middle School played a big role in the event this year as the middle school chorus sang the Greek national anthem, and students were also awarded for participating in a Boston Marathon themed essay contest. Here are the highlights from the event. The Consulate General of Greece was in attendance at the State House in Boston to present the marathon wreaths distributed to the Boston Marathon winners. The sport of marathoning derived from the 26 mile run from Athenian soldiers from the battle plain of Marathon Greece back to Athens to protect their city from the Persian army's second attack. The victory at Marathon was pivotal in the preservation of Greek civilization and their democratic political system. This year at the Boston Marathon Wreath Ceremony, the Hopkinton Middle School Chorus had the honor of singing the Greek National Anthem. Some Hopkinton Middle School students also took home awards in the Alpha Omega Marathon Education Committee Essay Contest. The committee serves to encourage appreciation of the civic responsibility and bravery ancient Greeks demonstrated at the Battle of Marathon. And I will start with grade six. So all the children that are in grade six, please come forward. <laughs> We have three gifts for you. There will be a gift of a wreath from the Consul General of Greece representing a gift from the government of Greece. You will each receive an autographed book of the story of Skidianos Kiriakidis, Running with the Divinities, which was signed by our author Nick Sioris here today. And you will also receive the DVD that was broadcast as part of the 2004 Olympics, talking about the Greek spirit, the spirit of struggle and democracy, the 1946 Boston Marathon. So the first uh, student I'd like to call up is Kate Bouvet. Hey. Come around this way. Kate plays soccer and piano. She is involved in drama club. And in the future, she desires to provide medical care to either humans as a doctor or to animals as a veterinarian.
Our next sixth grader from Huffington Middle School is Kevin Goose. Kevin plays piano, loves math and reading, and aspires to be either an environmental engineer or a science professor. Our last sixth grader is Cindy Yang. Cindy plays violin and flute. She is a first generation American. Her parents hail from China, and she will be a renowned watercolor artist. Grade seven. Aiden Medeiros. Aiden is from Hockington Middle School. He plays baseball, video games, and enjoys drumming. <laughs> He intends to play baseball for the Boston Red Sox in the position of either second base or left field. Yeah. And last but not least, winner, who was also here two years ago, Rusha Fugaraju from Huffington Middle School, plays tennis, loves math and writing, and will be a media fisher. A lot more to come on HCAM News, including a look at the Hillers boys lacrosse team and the latest sports happenings. You're locked into HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Do you have what it takes? Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hillers boys lacrosse team has some good senior leadership and is looking to get back into the postseason. I recently caught up with the captains and head coach Dan Norton to talk about the season. Fresh off a playoff season in 2015, the Hopkinton Hillers boys lacrosse team features some great senior leadership this year. I asked second year head coach Dan Norton and the captains what they are expecting this season. Yeah, we're very excited for this season. We have a very athletic group of guys. Um, we graduated a lot of people last year in, in some big leadership roles and especially defensively, but we return a lot on our offensive end and we're really looking for guys to step up in that leadership end. We have a lot of seniors that are ready to take that challenge and a big uh, uh, junior class as well. Um, as I said before, I think we're going to be one of the more athletic teams around. It's just a question of how we can improve our IQ on the field and come together as a team. Um, if you were to compare a team this week to our team at the beginning of the season, it's, it's a different team. Uh, a lot of um, you know, team bonding activities have brought the team together and uh, it shows in practice. So I, I hope we can bring that team chemistry uh, on the field and that will give us success. Uh, so far this year, I think we've made a lot of progress. Like just. Seeing where we come from day one to now, it's it's huge. You know, uh, a lot of new guys definitely you know, stepping up. You can see their progression; it's huge, and it's uh, great to see. Uh, we've been working hard in practices. At the beginning of the year, we weren't talking as much, but now we're hearing everyone across the field. It's a great thing, and like we're getting slides where we need them offensively. We're moving the ball well, hitting the cuts when we need to hit the cuts. Um, in this weather, it's like a problem for us, but we overcome it. We practice in the gym and we work hard as 
if we were outside. It's a little bit better than it was last year, so that's definitely you know a plus for us. Um, we're lucky enough to have this field here that we can get out on as much as we can. Um, the snow's kind of you know put a little hiccup in that, and um, we've been in the gym, which is a little tough with spacing and things like that. But I think the guys have responded, and you know we know that we can only control what we can control. And kids come out every day, whether we're in the weight room, whether we're in the gym, whether we're out here, or even the parking lot, and they're giving it their all every day and trying to get better. I asked each senior captain what their goals are throughout the season. I want to be the best goalie I can and uh, help our defense out and be really talkative and get loud and get a good defense going. Uh, to attain that leadership role, like our coach said, um, I'm a senior, so I'm going to take on that leadership role and lead this team to hopefully a playoff band. Uh, personal goals, I mean, just trying to fill my role, do whatever you know, team needs of me both sides of the ball. As a senior, I would, uh, I really want to take on that leadership role and uh, our end goal, as always, should, bring the, should be bringing the team to the tournament, so that's my goal. With the experienced leadership and great talent on the team, this season should be a fun one to watch for the Hopkinton Hillers boys lacrosse team. Speaking of Hiller sports, the spring season is underway, so here is a look at some of the latest happenings. To date, we hadn't really played um, our best. Um, the goalies had been, both goalies together, had been un well under 40%. And um, today, one of the big differences and what really boosts the team's confidence is the fact that um, Amanda Hasbrook, who was a starter last year, um, started the game today and, and was outstanding, made a bunch of saves. I don't know how many exactly, 10, which might be a per tie her personal best. Um, and uh, did good things with the ball when she did save them. All her clears were right on, and um, so that that was that was a big help. We were winning draws today. Um, the, the downside of today was um, uh, one of our captains, Taylor Pichel, going down uh, in the gosh, I think it was in the first half, um, towards the end of the first half, she kind of twisted an ankle. She's had some chronic ankle and knee is issues, so unfortunately she's a key player on our team. And, um, and then after that, Natalie Calkins, another midfielder, um, a fre freshman midfielder, went uh, came out of the game with um, a nice lump on her head um, with a collision. Could be a concussion, we don't know. Hopefully it won't be because she'll be out for um, at least a week if that's the case. But those uh, those two girls along with Maggie Dolan are kind of the heart of our scoring and um, and certainly our midfield winning all our draws, etc. So um, that was tough, but what I was proud of is that everybody else stepped up and had to um, maintain the small lead that we had. And at one point, I think we were up um, actually maybe uh, 10 to three. So um, we, we actually increased the lead with them being out of the game with people on the bench. So that makes me feel really good. Uh, we, don't, we have a small team this year. But um, the fact that the kids can come off the bench and maintain and then stretch out the lead is awesome. On Friday, April 15th, the Hopkinton Hillers softball team hosted their home opening game against Holliston. Both teams came into the game 0-2 on the season, trying to grab their first W. Top of the second scoreless game, one on, no outs for Holliston. Bree Mirabli, not too phased. Set to deal. There's a strike. Murphy goes down looking, one away. That one's down low. Runner takes off from first, throw to second, and it is in time. Caught stealing is Caroline Weiner, two away. There's strike three. Parabli with two strikeouts in the inning. Bottom of the second, the Hillers' bats light up. Aaron Kerr set to deal. And this is a liner in the left field that'll drop in for a base hit. Rounding first, she'll stay put. And it is a single for Lindsay Whittles to start off the bottom of the second. Kerr set to deliver. On the ground, fair territory up the middle. And the shortstop will hold up. Could not get the ball out of her glove, it looked like. And we'll head back to the bags. Two on, no outs for the Hillers as they are looking for their first run of the season. Line up and the pitch. On the ground, up the middle, slow roller, fair territory. Throw to third, not in time, everybody's safe. And that will load up the bases for the pitcher, Bree Mirabli. 
Good vision by Kerr, but quick base runners up the middle. It's bobbled, and that'll get by one run in. And everybody's going to hold up. And now on a second run, going to try to score the throw home is going to be. He is now safe home. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be in time, but they're going to call an obstruction on the catcher. So the run will count. So that'll make it two to nothing, Hillers, as Whittles and Bennett both score. A two nothing lead for the Hillers on the bottom of the fourth. Lily Morningstar at the plate with two on and two outs. Kerr delivers, and this is a bloop shot that'll get past the reach of the second baseman. Drops into right field, one run around the score, and holding up at third base is Emma Murphy. An RBI single for Lily Morningstar. 3 nothing Hillers, top of the seventh. Holliston down to their final three outs, but Shannon Murphy reaches on this double. So with a runner in scoring position, what would happen next? As Holliston trying to get some last minute heroics, and this is a little bloop shot. What a play by Isabel Holden, who comes running in and was able to glove that little bloop. Head coach Kylie Murray grabs her first win at the helm as Bree Mirabli pitches an absolute gem. She racked up 13 strikeouts and got the shutout. She had exactly two strikeouts in every inning except the seventh, in which she had one. She was also the offensive star of the game, hitting a two RBI single, went one for three overall as the Hillers pick up their first win of the season and improve to 1-2 and two overall. Holliston falls to 0-3. Oh you can see a whole lot of Hillers sports coming soon on the HCAM channels. Also live on HCAM at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, May 10th, we will be hosting a town election contested races debate. You can find more details on our website, hcam.tv. Speaking of programming on HCAM, Courtney Taylor is standing by to let you know everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, April 30th at 1.30 p.m., it's Hiller's Softball versus Holliston. On Monday, May 2nd at 6.30 p.m., the benefits of seniors helping each other are discussed on Senior View. A lot of my clients have memory issues mm -hmm. so it's working with them learning what their limitations are what they like to do what they don't like to do at 7 p.m the annual town meeting airs live on hcam tv on tuesday may 3rd at 7 p.m the annual town meeting will air live on hcam tv if it was continued on monday night on Wednesday, May 4th at 11 a.m., Boston Marathon legends Ambie Burfoot, Bill Rogers, and Bobby Gibb are honored for their achievements on a new HCAM News Focus. At 7 p.m., the annual town meeting will air live on HCAM TV if it was continued on Tuesday night. On Thursday, May 5th at 6.30 p.m., the causes and treatments of colorectal cancer and why so many people avoid testing are discussed on Physician Focus. There's a lot of environmental factors, I think, that we are yet to identify, but so far we have identified that to be if it's high fat, low fiber, um, pro more processed foods, these seem to have a link. On Friday, May 6th at 7 p.m., HHS students Kate Schweikart and Olivia Spar discuss Relay for Life on a new All About Hopkinton. You get so tired around 2 a.m., but you need to keep walking because a cancer patient can't just give up in the middle of their battle. They have to keep walking and keep pushing. And so we try to tell our adults that and our chaperones that we're here for a very specific reason. On Wake Up and Smell the Poetry at 8.30 p.m., Dan Tappan performs original songs filled with humor and heart. But the masters we admire Paint their words with brush of fire Stroke the strings on lyric lines Sing our hearts to peace And on HCAM Ed, the Jazz Night Concert will air. Check hcam.tv slash ed for program dates and times. If you want to stay up to date and informed with all that HCAM has to offer, head to hcam.tv slash connect where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know about current events in town, you can also subscribe to our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom.
Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, hcam.tv, you can find the latest Hopkinton-related news, including video and pictures from the Hopkinton Little League Season Kickoff Parade. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and thank you for watching. Open door.